Hello and welcome. I'm Nikki and today we are going to talk about the Kyron Horman case that is 10 years old. So I hope you are all doing okay out there. It is such a strange time in the world. I've actually had a little bit of difficulty focusing on the making videos actually focusing on anything but what's going on but I did do have been doing the research on Chiron and um, I wanted to make a video because it will be 10 years in June that he uh, has been missing um, so I'm glad you came please subscribe I'm gonna try to upload more often things that will calm down soon I hope I also want to say something really, really quick. Um, so I was in a chat with a sort of well-known um, true crime YouTuber, and I'd mentioned that I was doing the Kyron Horman case on my channel, and he seemed to get really anal about it. Let's just put it that way. Uh, he didn't understand why other YouTubers continue to do this case and cover Kyron's case, so I'm going to say right now for anybody who thinks that or for him too um Kyron's still missing nobody's been arrested charged convicted nothing so this case is completely wide open yes the police pretty much believe that the stepmother is guilty and probably about 95 percent of the people that know about this case um think that too my videos i give out the details of the case and then I will give a couple of theories just to put them out there because hey you never know okay you really don't know because the lady has not been arrested tried convicted okay so that I wanted to say <sighs> take a deep breath yeah so thanks for joining me hit that subscribe button that like button seven-year-old Kyron Horman went missing from Skyline Elementary School in Portland Oregon on June 4th of 2010, he was taken to school by his ex-stepmother, Terry Moulton Horman, for the science fair in which Kyra participated in. Terry took pictures of him and stated that that was the last time that she saw him standing in the hallway walking towards his classroom. He left his jacket and his backpack in the room and the teacher says that he never made it to class. Terry had sent an email and mentioned that Kyron had a doctor's appointment, so she didn't notice that he was really gone. Nobody notified anybody, but he was marked absent. At 3.30, Terry and Kyron's father went to the bus stop at 3.30 in the afternoon, and Kyron was nowhere to be seen, and then the search begins. So let me give you a little background about poor little Kyron, sweet seven-year-old Kyron. His mom and his dad, Desiree Young is his mom, Kane Horman is his dad, and um, they met and got married and got pregnant, and that marriage did not work, and they actually were divorced when she was pregnant eight months with Kyron. They shared custody, and during this time, Kyron's father, Kane, was actually dating the Terry lady that he later married. She was a substitute teacher, and they had been together for a long time. Uh, then, in 2004, Kyron's mom, who had custody, full custody, ended up getting diagnosed with kidney failure and was extremely sick and could not take care of Kyron. So, she gave full custody, or shared custody, to Kane and she visited when she could. They lived in separate towns, but she was still participating a lot in his life. Kane then married Terry and they raised Kyron and had a little baby girl. Back to June 4th of 2010, Kyron's stepmom and his dad, once discovering he has not been on the bus, they go back, call the school, and find out that Kyron has never been seen ever not even in school at all ever and the only time like I said the teacher had seen him was at the science fair 
Now, this science fair had a lot of people there, from what I understand. From what I've read, there's been, there was a lot of people, you know, parents, step-parents, I guess, uncles, brothers, sisters. They were all at this little science fair early in the morning. Um, so, that uh, opens a door to a stranger abduction. I'm just putting it out there, okay? So, then they call 911. The, the school's call actually calls 911. And the search begins. They... They had the biggest search in Oregon history of 2010, and they end up searching a tri-state area. They start with a little six-mile radius around the school, and then they end up going to different areas. Um, they focus on a place called Savile Island. I may not be saying that right. They don't say why they're searching over there, but they do. Terry gives a statement, as does everyone else who's interviewed, and this is how her statement goes. She says that once she leaves Kyron at the school at 8.45 a.m., she runs errands till 10.10 a.m., which she has seen on some surveillance videos at two grocery stores. Then at that time, between 10 a.m. and 11.39 a.m., she's nowhere to be seen. That is when her whereabouts cannot be traced whatsoever not by her she states that the little baby daughter that they have had an ear infection and that she had to drive her around back roads and all that and that was to soothe this baby so there's an hour and 39 minutes that she is not accounted for basically she's not seen with anybody she's not seen on cameras or anything like that so then she gets to 11 39 she gets to the gym and she stays there till 12 40 and um, then at 1.21 p.m. she is at home um, on Facebook and she's posting pictures. So we have one hour and 39 minutes technically that she is not really able to be seen and heard from. No trace of her. But of course they run phones and check phones and everybody sings and Terry's phone is not pinging on the places that she is saying. And actually, that is where the lake comes in to play. And that is where they're saying that her phone went. It became quite obvious that Terry's story was not adding up. And so the police begin to pressure her. And so they give lie detector tests to everybody who everybody passes except for Terry. Terry actually is given three lie detector tests, two of which she fails and one which she walks out. Later, in 2016, um, she is on the Dr. Phil show, and she says that she is unable to hear out of one ear, and that was what was causing the problems. It becomes quite obvious to law enforcement and to Kyron's dad and real mother that Terry is not the loving stepmom that she is trying to portray on TV. She's not the loving wife that she is trying to portray. She's actually quite a piece of shit and doing things behind Kane's back. After initially staying silent, Kyron's family steps forward on a united front. We see Terry Horman consoling the boy's biological mother, Desiree Young. They all take polygraph tests, and Kane Horman says Terry is vocal to the family about failing twice. He learns from investigators Terry had tried to enlist the help of a landscaper to kill him. He moves out with her daughter, Kiara. Divorce papers are filed along with a restraining order. One of the things that has came out via law enforcement is that there is a landscaper that worked for them that supposedly she offered a large amount of money for him to kill Kane, Kyron's father. Later on, though, this landscaper has retracted that statement and said that the law enforcement had really bribed him, persuaded him into saying that because they were going to deport him. Apparently, he's an illegal person, and he was going to say whatever the hell he was could to save his ass and not leave America. Whether it's true or not, now that pretty much is washed out because it just doesn't matter. But it is very much pointed out in everything that you find you always hear she hired somebody she hired somebody so i don't know that to me that pr pretty much negates itself because <clears throat> it's been proved <clears throat> that he has retracted that statement moving forward 
Kane proceeds to divorce her, get a restraining order, and does not want her to see their daughter, which from what I understand from the Dr. Phil interview, she has no contact with her daughter. Do you regret bringing her into Kyron's life? Well, that's a hard answer because we don't know for sure if she's responsible or not. But uh, based on what you know, we believe, absolutely. As the police continue to pretty much hone in on Terry, they speak to a friend of Terry's named Dee Dee. Dee Dee Spicer ends up being some kind of kind of weird lady too. She comes across as a weird person also and she bought a throwaway phone, a untraceable phone for Terry and she also apparently was doing some yard work around 11.30 a.m. for somebody on the day of the disappearance and up and vanished from this job for an hour and a half and um, nobody knows where she is. That's that. So you have Dee Dee. Dee Dee cooperated with the police. She did a long interview. She helped, you know, anything she could. She said she would never have anything to do with this. And then if Terry did, she wouldn't. She would just be just disgusted by Terry. She would never, ever participate in such a thing. But apparently, it's very strong by the family and by many people that are in the camp of Terry did it. They really, really, really believe that Terry and Dee Dee did this together. Kyron's mom, from what many interviews I've seen from her, she definitely thinks two people were involved. As I said, nobody's been arrested, convicted, jailed, anything, and Kyron's still not found. So, here we are, 10 years later, June will be 10 years, very sad, what a sweet little boy. And, you know, we're here, right about the time that Gannon, the Gannon Stout, uh, has disappeared, and his stepmom, and this really bring up a lot of stuff on the internet and on YouTube, you know, like, oh, this rings too much of a bell, the stepmother thing. Now, let me go ahead and just say, there's some other possibilities, okay? Theories, okay? Whether you want to believe that there's other theories or not, that's fine. We're just going to throw them out there because there are possibilities. And there's also the recent case of Harley Dilly who climbed in the chimney and literally everybody thought something had happened to him and he ended up being in a, stuck in a chimney. So, so tragic that story is. So, little boys do do crazy things, okay? First possibility is Kyron could have wandered off and died. There are lots of trees and forests around Skyline Elementary. It is actually very, very remote. There's not a lot of houses, not a lot of business. It's really out there in the forest, in the dense forest. Yes, there is a fence around this school, but, you know, he could have climbed. Although they did lots and lots of searching, they did lots and lots of searching for Harley Dilly, too, and, you know, they didn't find him. So, that's one scenario. The second one, it would be maybe he fell somewhere in the school and he's stuck. Okay, that's just one out there. Just putting it out there. You never know. It could have climbed inside some kind of weird place like Harley Dilly and is stuck <clears throat> in the wall. That's just a theory, okay? Then we have the option of maybe a stranger abducted him. This science fair was going on there were quite a few new people different people coming in and out seeing the science fair could somebody have lured him outside um could somebody have told him hey i need help with my science fair come out help me there's no cameras around the school at the time there are now because thankfully kyron's mom has been fighting for kyron and there are now cameras at the school and boy would they be freaking helpful if <laughs> they were there. Custodian, a teacher, a, another student's parents. I mean, that's just out there, you know. I'm sure that the law enforcement has looked into these, but I'm just saying, a lot of times law enforcement will focus on one thing and get tunnel vision um, and, you know, maybe they did. Maybe. That's just a maybe. 
don't come at me because I think like a lot of people are going to come at me because I'm throwing these out there. You know, I'm, I'm just reporting things that other people say and are curious to. The fourth one would be that the stepmother kidnapped and killed him and for what reason, who the fuck knows? Um, she's just evil. Maybe she was tired of him. Maybe she was trying to get rid of her husband for real. If she really was, maybe she's trying to kill the husband and the, and the boy and get money. Who knows? Um, but the police do definitely believe that, that she is guilty. Um, even though they, they can't arrest her. Basically, they won't arrest her until <clears throat> a body is found. That is what I've got from all the interviews from the mother. Kyron's mom has been a super huge advocate <clears throat> for Kyron. There's a Kyron Horman Foundation. They have, a, every year they have a, you know, reunion. There's a park for him. There is stuff everywhere. And Terry has moved to California and remarried and uh, has gone on with her life. And like I said, she does not see her, <clears throat> her child from her marriage with Kyron's dad. And it's just a really, really, really sad story, as all of these are. But what do you think happened? I mean, really, what do you think? The internet is wild with um, theories. Those are four theories of mine, also of other people that I've gathered over the internet. So, I mean, what do you think? Go ahead and comment. Leave me some comments. What do you think? I know most people think that the stepmother is guilty, and she very well could be. Kyron's mom has continuously been an advocate, as I said, for Kyron, and she would like for hunters and people that do hikers and people that are out in the Oregon wilderness to keep their eye open for Kyron for his remains. They believe he is gone. They do not believe he's alive. Keep your eye out, man. Keep your eye out, you know. This woman really, really, really would love some closure. So, if you have any information, there's going to be all kinds of links. I'm going to put links to all the kinds of things. There's stuff all over Reddit. Theories. There's also a Facebook page for Kyron. Kyron Hormans World so Soldiers because <clears throat> and it's a good um, it's a good Facebook page he has a Facebook page you can uh, contact for tips all kinds of stuff so thanks for watching and I will see you next time and take care of yourself and be careful wash your hands all the good stuff y'all yeah, be careful guys see ya